Welcome to your town. I'm Chef Wendy Brody with Art of Food, and I'm the culinary host for your town. And my guest today is none other than the lovely <laughs> local Monterey woman, <laughs> Grandam, uh, or you're not that old yet, well, Maureen Signorella. Oh, perfect. And um, <laughs> anyway, it's such a that's great opportunity to, to have you here. Thank you. And I'm just basically going to prompt you <laughs> with, I mean, you're Italian, you're Irish, yes. born here, but yes. traveled. Yes. You are a speaker, you're a cookbook author. So go with whatever you want to okay. talk with. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's so tempting. <laughs> well, uh, well, let's talk about your influences ah, first and yes. how and Okay. Well, I was born here, and it's such a wonderful place to be born, and into an extended Italian family and community. And, you know, Italians are all about fun and food. And, and fish. And <laughs> fish, yes. <laughs> and pasta. Exactly. <laughs> so my grandmother, of course, it, she was on the Italian side, and she was very influential. She had large dinner parties for to get the Italian vote and et cetera, et cetera, many, many things. And she was really wonderful. And uh, I learned a lot from her. I was her only grandchild that would eat anything. Oh. <laughs> My favorite was her uh, linguine with a sea urchins puree. I don't know if you've ever had that with squeezed lemon. She some tomato on top. Mm. But she was a regional cook, as you know, Sis uh, is from Sicily. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I should have mentioned in yes. the very beginning, but we know you a as Pasta Mia ah. for years, and what a wonderful Thank and you. successful restaurant Thank that you. was. Yeah. Um, but how did that happen? How did that <laughs> happen? <laughs> well, since I was 14, I worked in restaurants locally. And I, um, I worked in all sorts of restaurants, but my favorites were the French. I worked with Pierre mm. Bain, and I worked oh, with yes. Yvan Nopair, and uh, Walter Becker had the somewhat French restaurant. But uh, I, it, something began for me having my American-Italian background, Monterey, and then to see something else. And the way the, they were in those days, they were so wonderful to learn from because they, they, their cuisine complimented what I wanted to learn, and it was just so interesting. So I think that was a great influence, and that led me to uh, send myself to Dijon, where I went to school for uh, a year. And, you know, Dijon is near Bonn, the wine. So on weekends, all of us students would, you know, head out to the farmyards with our little thing and go taste, and it was great, great life. It was fun. And uh, I, something occurred then, too. A trend began in my world. You know, life takes you along a path. And I decided I wanted to come back to France. So I would go home and work in restaurants. Club Nineteen would take me back. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. And I would go back and forth and live in Paris. I lived in Paris for a while, you know, meeting different people there, going to Cordon Bleu, not as a steady student, but on and off and learning the oh, language. How great. Yeah, it was great. Great. And I eventually ended up in Italy. I did that for almost almost 10 years. I Italy and yeah. back and mm -hmm. forth all, all three the <laughs> yeah. triangle, the golden triangle. Exactly. <laughs> where stress was just getting up deciding where to have your coffee. Those days that we never see again. Oh goodness. <laughs> the young days. <laughs> now, did you speak French or I didn't speak when I arrived. I speak now, of course. I learned it while I was there. Yes. The program was from 9 to 12, speaking French, and then you off on your own to wander about, you know. Lyon was nearby, all sorts of wonderful places. Well, that's how Alice Waters got oh, really? her inspiration. Um, oh. you know, she was over there, and the fact that people could get fresh French bread I know. daily, I know. and their cheese, and bring it home and eat fresh food from the farmer's market, and, and we're just catching up in this country. I know. And in Dijon at the university, they served you, the first day I got my lunch, I thought, oh my God, a little glass of red wine. Like, have I gone to heaven or what? <laughs> then cheese, and then, you know, just great. Well, it was really fun. When I was over there, we had wine all oh, day long, but the... Um, <laughs> 
percentage of alcohol was Lower. so much less. Right, right. And it's and no wonder little kids, <laughs> were, they, they, the parents exactly. could give them a sip here and there without. Well, my uh, mother always told the story that if she, if she told it now, they'd feel horrible. As a child, they always had lunch at home before they walked to school, and they had a little wine, little spoonfuls of wine in their water. It's just normal. Everything's different. Did you lean to anything in particular, in desserts terms of, or, or? Actually, or I, I was enamored of, I, I leaned to the classic in terms of beginning with the mother sauces and understanding that those can be taken, given mm -hmm. to you, and you do what you like in a sense with them. I learned the concept of uh, the milfe, you know, the Napoleon, yes. the thousand layers of texture, how it's balanced, how things, something, you taste something and something's missing and it's not always acid, you know, everyone jumps in, acid! <laughs> <laughs> but, or you know, base. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there was much to learn and there was a way of life to learn as well because it was a slower way of life where things were emphasized were different. It was still family, which I could relate to, but for me coming from Monterey, which is a very small world when I grew up, and to be able to go to another country there's something very relaxing about not even knowing another language and learning it because your senses are uh, tweaked because you're not concentrating totally on the word and the exchange of the word. So that there was all sorts of things that came about, a lot of them having to do with the senses and just a, a movement in life. Um, now, with your experience in Italy, mm -hmm. how... <laughs> what were the differences? Or oh, what? such a good question. Well, because there's, the, you know, they both French and Italian love family and life, and they're both in the streets. But the French, as Jean Paul Sartre had said, you have to wait, and behind the garden is a beautiful house, and you're invited, but you have to wait to be invited. With the Italians, the gate is always open. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> I mean, Great you know, description. Yeah, it was his. And then the thing is, the food also. You know, the French plate is perfect. The Italian plate is perfect in a different way. But, you know, if they pop up, it's, you know, it's just an ease. It's a little bit, it was a little bit more familiar for me, and it felt very relaxing, very family-like, you know. Like the concept of family platters yes, and so exactly. forth. Yes, exactly, the I, antipasti table, you know. Did, do you think that really sort of started here? I always think in American terms it's from the Midwest feeling oh, with the generous plates yeah. and Thanksgiving yeah. and family farm. That's interesting. Uh, so I don't know whether that was brought over that concept. Well, if it was, you know, it also came from Germany, the Hofbras and things like mm. that. But with the Italians, it's the antipasti table that you find in trattorias, but not ristorantes. So, originally, anyway. So, the trattoria is for everybody for food. There's no, it's not fancy. Everyone's there for the same reason. And so, always in our restaurant, when we opened, that was one of the first things we wanted to put in. Because you walk by and you get the colors and the, the aromas, and you know, it's, it's, it's a kickback. And you did that with your cousin. Yes, yes. Trisha mm -hmm. Aliotti. She and I and Maria Aliotti, whose mother owned oh, Paulina's. Yeah. yeah, wow. We all lived together in Florence. Oh, how uh, <laughs> home away from in home. In an apartment above a, oh, uh, wow. a coffee bar. Yeah, we would go down in the morning and get our coffee. You know, like, yeah. sure. Now, you, you brought that concept back here. Yes, we so, did. So. Trisha and I did. After opening Pasta Mia, which we were a hit very quickly, but... I could see why in a sense because a lot of it had to do with timing and we were really trying to bring what we lived in Italy here and that became a popular concept in the future as it has become now with the fresh food we did our own olives from Watsonville we, oh. we sun dried our own tomatoes you know, we salmoni salta olio the Alaskan salmon that the fishermen bring back layered it's the gravlox basically yeah, yeah. Oh my things goodness. like that so we were hit, and then we decided, well, what else don't they have here? And the answer was an identical coffee bar. So Trisha, my partner, went to Italy to learn gelato from the man who had won the award in Europe. Wow. She was there for one month while I held on to the restaurant. She came back, and we put together uh, gelato mio, which was espresso, cappuccino, 
stainless steel glass, very much like today, except it was, you know, well over 20 years ago. And nobody knew, was if no one here was interested in coffee. <laughs> they were like, what's this? <laughs> so we did two of them. And we had 16 people ask us to franchise us, so we were on to something. Yeah, but it, it, at that point, Trisha um, decided to get married, and so she <laughs> moved off onto other projects. And I stayed at Pasta Mia. We sold the gelatos, and, uh, you know, I just started advertising and doing things a little different. Well, let's talk a little bit more about coffee and gelato. Mm -hmm. How would us in, in the home, mm -hmm. if you don't have a gelato, we'll, yeah, how would you make it? I mean, what are the differences mm -hmm. between ice cream and gelato? Well, it's the butter, buttermilk fat content. But when we made our gelato, we inverted our own sugar. We had a base, and then we would bring in fresh ingredients. There are Italian housewives in Naples and other places. You could make a beautiful lemon gelato just on a little on your stovetop. So it's it's very possible. You don't have to have all the equipment, but to do the fancy ones that we were doing, you probably would need a little. It's, it's a, a little bit more complicated than it appears, but the product is fantastic. <laughs> One of my favorite desserts I had in an Italian <laughs> restaurant was affogato. Oh, affogato, yeah. Oh, we used to have that on the menu. It's delicious. Well, maybe it was a year. I can't remember <laughs> because it became the easiest yeah. and yet mo so delicious yes. instead of ordering coffee or espresso. Exactly. So I'll let you explain what affogato It's an is. espresso with a scoop of gelato. We would use a vanilla, I don't know what they were using. And uh, just if you want a little cookie laying on top or, you know, a touch of cream. Just like the Vino Santo is also very popular and simple. A little thing of Vino Santo, which is so popular in the afternoons in Florence, always, and then a little cookie, the biscottini that you dunk in. Oh, wow. No, and biscotti are so good. I know. <laughs> the, uh, I, biscotti range all over the place. There are some that are huge and oh are jawbreakers, but delicious and chocolate dipped. It's and true. then there are small ones yeah. that are just perfect. Yeah. That, um, but it's fun to find a really light something at the end of the meal, you know, something that I like to encourage a little bit of the dark chocolate with something. <laughs> you know, so many people are under the misnomer that uh, espresso is really strong, mm -hmm. dark, full mm -hmm. of caffeine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I won a bet with uh, my husband who uh, ran a, a coffee bar I at did Sunset that. Center Esperanto. Uh, was, I remember uh, that. Yes. And so... He he didn't realize, and I had just come, I cheated, I had come from a lecture of Ely Cafe. Oh, so I knew that espresso it has the least caffeine of any it's, of the It's coffees. finer. I mean, it's smoother. I don't know what it is. Well, it goes through the uh, process. process so much faster. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stay on the beans mm -hmm. and, uh, or it. the ground. Yeah, so uh, that's why people can have it at night with yes. that twist of yes. lemon or that sugar cube. <laughs> I don't know, though. When I got to a certain age, all of a sudden, when I'd have espresso at night, I'm waking up at 3 o'clock going over my life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Starting from the beginning, it's a long night. Well, you know, it, it, it shows power of thinking, <laughs> you know, when you think, oh, I've had coffee. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's, it's real, sometimes... It's you know, we can it's psych true. ourselves up. That's it. right. It's delicious, though. Another thing you talk about, and we were, to, I always think of love and food. Yes. And the, the passion you share, um, your philosophy on that, and, and also a little bit about lecturing. And love and food. Well, sometimes I think. <laughs> I think there's a great similarity. It, it is a love. It's a different sort of love, obviously. It's funny you mention that because it's kind of what my book's about. It's a storyline that follows a semi-autobiographical story, but sometimes love and food get interconnected, and it's kind of amusing. But um, I just think that love fits everywhere. 
It, 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 does. Yeah. it does. Well, let's talk more about your book. You're oh. writing one, and you've been an author before. Yes. But Just um, articles, though. I hadn't written a book before. Okay. And when I sat down to write the book, actually, I thought I was going to write a cookbook. And I didn't realize it, but something occurs when you're writing a book that some something, this spirit with you or something. Because I wrote the book, I started, and my first line was, According to Mama, my first word was food, which is true, <laughs> followed by hurry. And then I thought, that doesn't sound like a cookbook. And then, da, 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 da. so I, I, I wrote a, an autobiographical semi only, amusing, a little dramatic. But surprise. That makes it more personal. And yeah, I mean, they're it's fun. It's, the recipes are in there, but they are at the end of the chapter that match the, the script. So, yeah, it's fun. It's a lot more work than I realized. <laughs> I had no idea. It's just like when we opened the restaurant, I thought it'd be just a couple of years, and 20 years later, you just don't know. Time flies. It doesn't. It gets yes. scary, and it goes faster the older we get. Like dear I friend. said to you <laughs> when we were talking, why did I sell the restaurant? And I said, because it was successful at the time, and I, things were going well, and I had mm -hmm. great employees that had been with me almost 20 years. So it was fantastic. But I understand that life is chapters. I was and just I really, gonna... yes, we talked about it. Do you agree? Oh, yes, but I loved it. Yeah, I, I mean, you w did help me a little bit. Yeah. And I loved when I read your thought about chapters of life. Yeah. So yeah. We, we were just going to share that at the oh, same I time. I think we can appreciate it. I know I can more at my age. and I, and I But I understood it early. You know, sunrise, sunset. I mean... There's an end coming eventually, so we have to get our oh, little... Oh, no, new beginnings. I new, begin the new beginning, <laughs> right. We have to get that meal in. So I don't like to miss anything. So I wanted to see about being a writer, seeing what that felt like, seeing what it felt like not to have to get up and work all day. <laughs> oh, yes, and we in this business yes. know the 16, 18 Ooh. plus hour days yes. and schlepping and... Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Getting food That's out true. our front. So many times people say it must be so fun to own a restaurant. Right, between 5 and 10. <laughs> you know, from the 8 a.m. to the 5 and then the 10 to the 1, a little harder. Well, let's end up with awards. You've been given oh. <laughs> awards and recognized and hopefully will con continue to always so. be recognized. So let's Well, talk. Trisha and I won awards with uh, Pasta Mia. And then I continued to win them. We won the whole time I owned Pasta Mia. We won every best Italian because I don't know. We really put our heart into it, but it was also timing it's and things. The love. Yes, yeah, sold love. Yes, we did sell love. And I always tell my employees when a new employee would start to work for me, when someone walks in the door, just take one minute to identify what their need is whether they're looking for a quiet night, whether they're in love, mm -hmm. and they don't really want to get to know your <laughs> life story tonight, and meet it, match that need. So in a sense, you know, that is, that is a type of love, and I don't know. An historic building award? Didn't yes, I won the historic building award. We won best business of the, I won best business of the year, um, and I won runner-up best business of the year as well. And that was for, um, we started feeding monthly uh, homeless, which was very wonderful at the time and loved doing that. That was great. And um, we were in magazines and travel books and in quite a few, I have quite a few awards. I have all my reviews in the box in the garage. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you thank so you. much Time for so coming, fast. doesn't it? Well, thank you, and I, there's so much more to you. Uh -huh. I might have to have you back again. Oh, thank you. You're so nice. <laughs>